Time now for Morning Rounds, a look at the medical news of the week. As firefighters in California get closer to fully containing the fires, people in the region have had to deal with massive amounts of smoke in the air. Due to weather and patterns earlier in the week, some of the wildfire smoke from California actually drifted as far as New York. Thick smog could be seen throughout parts of California, forcing many residents to wear masks when they were outside. According to the Air Quality Index, some areas are still experiencing moderate amounts of pollutants, although air quality has improved over the past few days. Here to discuss this and more is CBS News medical contributor Dr. David Agus. Good morning to you. Good morning. So there was a pulmonologist who was quoted in the New York Times who said, if this kind of air quality from wildfires doesn't get people concerned, I don't know what will. What are the health concerns surrounding the wildfires? You know, when you burn something, there's particulate matter that goes in the air and it gets stuck in the lung and then your body tries to get rid of it and it makes this immune response. You get lots of inflammation in the lung and this can stay there for long periods of time. You know, I was evacuated from my home. Our kids, you know, they, they canceled school in California. They canceled the Stanford Berkeley football game of all things because they didn't want people out there. You couldn't see in front of you. It was wild. You see people wearing these masks. One, do those help at any point? And, and really, what are the strategies to avoid getting sick? So there are masks that help. They're called N95 or N100. And that's a, that the size of the pore can actually block the particulate matter. The problem is it makes it harder to breathe. Mm -hmm. And so you have to breathe through that filter. And so people with cardiac problems, it makes your heart rate faster. And so masks help, no question about it. But the key is stay indoors. The key is turn off your you know, air conditioning that brings in air from the outside. The key is don't do strenuous exercise. You have to breathe deeper when there's particulate matter in the air. How significant an uptick in hospital visits have there been? And, and are we still learning about the long-term health effects of this kind of thing? No question. I mean, you look at Beijing, you look at, you know, parts of India where they have this on a daily basis. And what we're seeing is dramatic uptakes in rates of cancer and heart disease. We're having an increase in hospitalization visits here, both during the episode and for weeks to months afterwards because of the response. And so this is real and this is going to be something that is more and more common. We have to figure out better ways of filtering the air in the house and dealing with it as individuals. We're going to have to learn to live with this. And you know, long term effects that we'll see from it as well. Up next, peanuts, the most common food allergen among children in the U.S., and it's also a problem for many adults. For those with a severe allergy, peanuts can be deadly. Right now, there are no approved treatment options, but one study shows what could be on the horizon. Published in the New England Journal of Medicine, the study looked at a phase three trial of a drug called AR101. 496 out of the 551 participants were ages four to 17. The trial tested how much peanut protein they could ingest after taking the drug. And what can we say about this? Is this a big deal? I love the fact that it's called AR 101. Yeah. Yeah. All it is is ground up at peanuts where they take out the fat. I mean, so, but it's, <laughs> it's a lot cooler when you call it AR 101. Yeah. Um, but it really is a remarkable study because what they did was they took kids and these are kids, one in 50 kids in the United States has a peanut allergy and they are scared to death. You know, a boy is afraid to kiss a girl because she had peanuts, you know, they can get an anaphylactic reaction and potentially die. Sitting in a chair with someone just had peanuts can be, you know, deadly to them. And they gave them small amounts of peanuts that went up day by day, and they actually tolerized. They turned off the immune response against the peanuts. And so for the rest of their life, they'll have one of these capsules, or many of the kids afterwards actually switch to having two peanut M&Ms every day. Wow. And that same amount every day basically turns off the immune response, not so they can go and have peanut brittle, but so that they're not afraid and they don't lie in fear every time they go out with friends and they don't have to wipe off every surface when they sit down. It really changes their life. Two thirds in the study of these kids got better. By the way, in the study, the adults didn't benefit from it. It was just the kids. Almost wow. like you have to start yeah, earlier with it. And that... yeah, we're done. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <adults. laughs> what about side effects from the drug? And then I guess how, what was the inherent risk even with eating peanut products after that? There's no question there were side effects to this and that some of the kids had a real reaction to it and didn't do well with the study. But many of the kids did better. There were side effects to the placebo, but much less, obviously. And then for the rest of their life, they're not cured, but they figure out a way to live in less fear. And I think that's critical. And hopefully this will be on the market and FDA approved sometime next year. It really changed the lives of a lot of children in this country. Sooner rather than later, from your lips to God's ears. Thank you, Dr. David Agus. We appreciate you. Oh, my pleasure.